Today we're going to talk about abstracting to simplify watercolor. First of all, we're going to look at a recipe. It starts with ignoring details. We will be observing values, highlights, darks, mids. Uh, we'll replace the actual colors with our preferred colors. In this case, purple will be opera, cobalt, yellow will be lemon yellow, cat yellow, queen gold, and cat orange. Here's the analysis of our picture. In this case, we are highlighting all the highlights uh, using white to circle those out. Uh, very simply, we looked at where we think the highlight should be. Uh, it's kind of hit and miss in some way, but it doesn't matter because we are abstracting. Uh, we'll use red to show where I think uh, the darkest dark are. Uh, we put down uh, the bottom of the cup. Uh, same with the second cup. And we looked at uh, the shadow plus the cup. Uh, beginners usually think of those two as two different shapes. But often uh, when you try to simplify, you think of one shape that covers the darkest part of the cups as well as the shadow. We're going on to the teapot uh, in the same way. Those are the darkest part of the teapot, or at least that's where we intend to make it the darkest part. Continue with the little darks, the darker, the little shapes, uh, or, or the darkest darks. Uh, we'll use pink to show where the potentially the mid areas are, uh, the mid value. I'm circling it for you, uh, where I intend to put uh, the mid values. So I think we're kind of done. This is really just a very simple analysis and that's how you abstract a complex shape. We ignore all the uh, drawings for now. Okay, we'll start with um, uh, teaching you a very basic step, which is uh, creating a watercolor shape and uh, softening one of the edges uh, like so so if you put down uh, your color in this case it's opera from Hobain uh, and then you washed the, uh, the brush with clear water uh, I'm using a simple water brush uh, and uh, I come in from the outside and as I wash away one of the edge as you can see it will uh, create a shape that is sharp on one part and then soft on the other part. Let me do it again. But this time I'm going to drop in a uh, second color. Uh, again, it's Opera from Hobain. Uh, I will take uh, a second color, in this case uh, Cobalt, Daniel Smith Cobalt, and I dropped it in uh, like so. And clear my brush coming from the outside and wash one of the edge away. It's a beautiful shape, basically. Hard uh, edges and soft on the other side. Now. What we're going to do, we are going to um, draw the simple uh, picture that we have uh, chosen, uh, the teapot, the two cups, and uh, well, basically ignoring everything but the most clearest outline. Uh, remember that stacking of shapes, uh, in this case stacking the shape of the cup uh, on top of the teapot allows you to create a false sense of three-dimensional uh, uh, shapes. Uh, it's basically a, a simple ploy to create depth uh, from uh, you know two-dimensional paper uh, with a pencil, basically. So as you can see, uh, again stacking the shape. So there are three shapes, uh, two cups and teapot, uh, you know, combination of that. But the stacking of the shape itself create somewhat of a depth uh, in terms of the three dimensional. I, I also put in a bit of the highlight as you can see on the teapot, uh, just to remind myself where I would uh, like to leave paper white when I put down the color. Drawing should be a relaxing uh, process, basically observing. The more careful you observe, uh, the better your drawing will be. It is not your skills with your hand, it's actually the skills with your eyes. And
and that's something that most people still uh, struggle with uh, because we think drawing is with the hand actually drawing is with the eye it's all about observation um, unless uh, you know you're drawing from the mind uh, fantasy drawing for example even that it is still an exercise of the mind not so much the exercise of the hand um, so now we're ready to put colors uh, we will be using uh, some funky colors uh, opera from Hobine uh, and as well as cobalt uh, those two makes a beautiful purple I, I really love that combination so let's see how that goes right uh, as we dropped in uh, remember where we put in the ducks uh, those are the spots that we have sort of identified where the ducks are I, I start there um, and uh, putting in a generous load of uh, opera uh, with uh, you know uh, sufficiently wet so that uh, it will not dry so fast when, when I you know, go and put in uh, a few of those uh, ducks. So I've stayed my case, I put in where the ducks are uh, and now I'm ready to uh, soften some of the edges. Sorry about the quality of the recording. Uh, as I zoom in, uh, the detail is somewhat lost, but in any case, I didn't quite get the focus as well. So that's why, uh, but you get a gist of it. Uh, the colors and the, the edges are softened like so. Second shape uh, gets the same treatment, uh, avoiding the highlights, uh, those uh, little spots that I've uh, drawn with very light pencil mark marking the third and last shape so softening the edges uh, making it sort of uh, harder edge on one side and then softer on the other side or sometimes it's just about the gradation of colors right so you have more pigment on one end of the shape uh, compared to the other so now I drop a little bit of cobalt blue as I've shown you earlier uh, to charge it in and that creates this glowing beautiful purple that I really love um, and uh, it's a funky color it's not reality it's not uh, the same color as what you would see on the teapot but it's what you would uh, uh, use to represent the values that you see so again on uh, as we progress on the uh, handle and the rest of the shape. One of the things that uh, beginners uh, are not comfortable do 
uh, doing would be the melting of the pot, the teacup and the shadow. I think of them as value. So as the value uh, is the same between the darker end of the cup and the shadow bit, I treat them as one shape and I paint right through it uh, without thinking about them as uh, two separate shapes. So I don't color uh, the shadows and the cups in two different uh, you know, uh, patches of colors, but I treat them as one melted whole. And actually this is what creates a very beautiful uh, sort of uh, experience for the viewer uh, that uh, you, are, you are mixing uh, the shape and you're linking them. Uh, in this case, I'm linking the broad shape of the shadows with the darker, darkest part of the two tea cups. So now we're ready to paint the background. Um, as you can see in the picture, the background is very dark, it's green and so on. But of course the liberty of an artist, the artistic license allows us to paint whatever color we want. So because we have used purple for the foreground and the, the objects um, of interest to give contrast, uh, yellow purple is a simple complement uh, you know, in the color wheel. It's the exact opposite. Uh, I use somewhat of a dirty yellow with queen gold with lemon yellow mixed in uh, that really gives it a gorgeous sort of opposites if you like between the purple and the yellow And I think that's it, we're done. Um, we have uh, created a very simple abstract shape of a uh, teapot with two cups. Put our name down and uh, I think we'll consider it uh, a day. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this sort of content, I hope um, you will consider subscribing and uh, smash that like button for me. Thank you very much.